Hi, Zizrin here, fresh off the flight from LA, and uh, I guess this is the sponsored video because Grindier Games flew me out to LA to try Path of Exile 2. I asked for permission. I didn't just steal this, Chris, okay? I asked for permission. They said I could take it. I got to try Path of Exile 2. They flew me out. This was unlimited time. We got to play, I think I got to play three or four hours. So I tried a little bit of the Ranger, a little bit of the Sorceress. We started from level one. We had access to the skill tree and we actually got to play the game. This was in a predetermined demo that started at a certain level. We actually get to make our own characters. Another thing that was really cool as well, and sadly I don't have any footage to show off this, but they did show off that Path of XL2 is going to have mounts. And you can attack while moving from them. We got to see a little bit of that. A ranger using attacks while on the mount. And it looked really cool. I, I did hear like just so many people going like that's going to be some MTX. Obviously that is going to be the case. Which I'm looking forward to. I did always wonder if we were going to get mounts in Path of Exile. And uh, yeah we are. So that's very cool. So we're going to go through and talk about a few of the things. I didn't actually have access to a microphone there. So this is me playing and then we're going to be looking over. So here we are starting with the Ranger and you can see that we have access to softcore and hardcore. However, um, I'm most likely definitely going to be spending quite a lot of time learning the game on softcore. It is a lot more Dark Souls like than the current Path of Exile. And especially the bosses are incredibly fun. It is very, very different than the current game. Um, and here, as you can see instantaneously when we're starting off, is that I choose WASD movement, which I was incredibly skeptical with. You can see here that I instantly put mouse button one, but then I realized I don't need mouse button one. I'm WASD now. And it grew on me very quickly. It did take probably like 10, 15 minutes to get used to, and it was a little bit weird. But being able to attack while moving felt so incredibly good. In fact, so much so that later on, whenever I did get any move that made me stand completely still, my main feedback was there should probably not be very many moves that makes you stand completely still. They should just greatly reduce. But you can see very similar experience here at the start from current Path of Exile where you're finding the chests, etc. You're finding a gem. This is a predetermined gem, not the uncut gems that we've seen that we have access for later. So we will be getting that later. But even once you get the uncut gems uh, and other people that I spoke to that had um, played for the first time and had maybe not a lot of hours in Path of Exile 1, uh, said that they found it a lot less complicated. And that is because PoE 1 gives you, you know, you can see in the vendor like 60, 70 different gems. Here you do actually on the uncut gems only get access to three early on. So it's a lot less to take in. Very similar at this point to PoE 1, maybe a little bit slower. And you can see that monsters are individually a little bit scarier. And here is a very big difference. The Act 1 or the start equivalent of uh, Hillock is a lot harder. Um, he actually almost one hits you with one of his slams and um, does a lot of damage. Ended up using my lightning arrow to clear the monsters and um, I'm using my auto attack. And auto attack was pretty potent uh, early on in the game to uh, do single target there. And an important thing about the roll is that it has iframes. So you will see that later with one of the bosses that we are literally iframing through like volleys of attacks, um, keeping me safe. But here, yeah, very, very dangerous boss early on. I will have a separate video going through all of the bosses I fought and stuff like that. And even the campaign bosses are borderline on levels of ubers that we're currently facing in the game. So I think bosses are going to be a lot more interesting. And I think we're going to see a lot more softcore than, than hardcore. The skill tree is not finished, but you can see very like similar vibes. Um, I will not be going over the skill tree and showing everything as well. The reason for that is it, it is mostly changing. Like... Uh, there are going to be a lot of changes, so there there was simply no reason to like make like a full go over the skill three video. But you can see that I am allocating skill trees and trying to figure out where to go next and stuff. Um, 
of the violence. Here you can see the first uncut skill gem. So now when I'm right clicking that, you can see what I'm talking about here. You can even see that I'm trying to fetch a little bit of lore here by skilling through it. But um, the uncut skill gem, what this does is I can right click it and it lets me choose. And if I pause here as well, you can see that I'm able to even see what I'm going to be able to make in the future once I'm higher level. So early on, we have Storm Color Arrow, Escape Shot, and a Lightning Arrow that we already have. And Storm Color Arrow, honestly, it is like Explosive Arrow, but Lightning, and actually ended up being my main single target for the entirety of the run. Later on, I'll be picking a Vine Arrow. I'm very excited to show that. It was a lot of fun. Now, a big thing in this, when you die, the boss fully resets health. In fact, if you die to a zone, the monsters reset spawn as well but as you can see here at the top of the screen there's the blue checkpoint um so you can see i'm fighting kind of the equivalent of hail rake here and uh, they definitely have some moves that you do need to like learn you also want to just learn the, the patterns of the fight and the ads so that's what i mean that it's a little bit more dark soulsy and early on you don't have that many more abilities and you're getting stuck on things and you're getting stunned very quickly you can actually see a health bar or, or a bar above my health uh, potions, and that is a stun bar, so when that one fills up, you get stunned. Um, but yeah, this is the Karen Crone, and uh, even early on, the bosses are quite difficult. Now, obviously, like, we will learn a lot more about how variable hardcore is in the beta. Um, and uh, yeah, we will uh, we'll figure things out there. Maybe with overleveling and knowing exactly what the bosses are, can do, you will be okay. But, but it is quite scary. A lot of things are like almost one hitting you and stuff. And we can see here when I kill the Karen Crone that I'm about to get a quest item that is increasing my cold rest. And you do get like um, less items than early on in PoE. And I do actually quite early in this playthrough find a, a rare bow, which helped me a lot. Now, one of the things I really want to show you is a little bit further in when I pick up Vine Arrow. And they did show us a little bit of a live demo with Octavian playing before we got to play. And um, he showed off Line Arrow and like the utility and how that worked. It just looked so strong. It looked like Toxic Rain. It slows down every, uh, every monster close to it and gives like a poison dot on it. So I was like, I'm just going to use that as my main ability. And I remember Jonathan coming over and saying, oh, we haven't seen anyone do that. That was my favorite skill. Uh, I think I started using that with Poison Burst Arrow later for additional single target. And then I had uh, my Lightning Arrow as well. So I had like a fun rotation there. Another thing as well, you might have noticed, I have made great efforts to not show the minimap as much because I know people don't like that. That was very difficult for me, but I persevered. Now, I've skipped a little bit. We are an hour in, and I wanted to show you my playstyle a little bit. So now we are, I think I'm around level 10 right now. And you can see that I'm actually, even though I'm on a one link, I'm early on. I think I still, I have a rare short bow at the moment. You can see that the pace is actually not too bad. That was one of the things that I was terrified of um but honestly from uh, from what i'm feeling about this is that it comes down to the fact that it's in true gdd fashion that almost everything they've shown up so far has been with a like one link with no damage supports with uh, no movement speed etc so um you know even early on now that i'm starting to scale a bit i was feeling um pretty decent and i did see people were getting to some pretty okay damage which was uh, very good for me to see. If you see that monster with a shield, that actually ends up giving me a huge trouble with my Sork later, because right now I'm degening that thing, making it have no issues. But it actually reflects all abilities when it has um, a shield. It does like a projectile coming back at you when you have a shield up. So um, it was awful on my Sorcerer. Did not even notice it on this because my build was so strong with the degen. So really enjoyed that. Um, another thing as well that was a little bit jarring was uh, having to go back to town for potion charges was definitely something I don't like and I do hope they reconsider that. It was definitely not as bad on Ranger because early on on Ranger I managed to pick up uh, life flasks recharge every few seconds and um, and also mana flask recharge every few seconds and, and Ranger doesn't even use that much mana compared to Sort. Um, Rare monsters here, you can see as well, are actually a little bit of a battle. They're a lot more like mini bosses. Um, this one is a little bit scary because it does have that shield, so it's hard to damage it, which I had not realized at this point, by the way. Um, I was not fully aware. 
But you can see that when I kill it, it does actually drop not a like bad amount of bases. And um, I did get, I think like three alchemies or something like that. And uh, I had not discovered at this point that I could disenchant items similar to Pee Wee One. So you can sell things for gold or you can sell things for alteration shards, alchemy shards, etc. And here you have a pretty cool boss fight. I think I managed to kill this on the first or second try. On my sorceress, I think this took me six or seven tries. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about sorceress at the end of this. But this is Draven. Very cool boss. Um, and yeah, honestly, that has been my favorite thing. The fact that everything is so different. And that's... Um, it's, it's very Elden Ring feel to it. You can see that the lightning is increasing the stun bar here as well. And when I get it stunned... He uh, will just stand still for three or four seconds, letting me do damage. So this is that like explosive art with lightning that I told you about. You can see that the lightning projectile gets stuck in him and uh, detonates a few seconds later. The pretty cool boss fight here. I saw quite a lot of you people were dying of this. Now, some of the bosses do start getting different abilities the lower they get as well, or their abilities will become more powerful. So, boss fights aren't taking that long, and this is also early on. I don't have any, like, crazy items or anything. Um, they have changed the way portal and stuff works as well. You're about to see that I'm portaling out. Um, oh, no, actually, this is an anti-backtrack feature that they have. Um, but maybe I do end up portaling here. I can't exactly remember because this was two days ago. There, yeah. Create a portal to town. It's no longer something they have a scroll. It's an infinite resource with a channeling time. Um, and then you can hit the well. You also instantaneously get, um, full flasks by engaging with the boss. So you can see here that I'm, like, IDing things to sell them. I completely missed the fact that I could, um, uh, disenchant at this point. And, uh, you know, just looking through some item upgrades. I think I am using a short bow at this point. I'm just vendoring everything, and I'm going to keep the thawing flask in case I get frozen. So that is a utility flask that helps you not get uh, frozen. Um, some of the cool things that we saw on flasks as a roll, I didn't get one. But somebody did get a flask that had passively recharges. Um, flask charges. We're actually going to keep watching here because now I'm about to fight another really cool boss. I do want to make a separate video going over all the bosses just because of how cool they were. And uh, I am 90% sure I died to Lachlan. Because he has a pretty pretty scary slam. And you can see here my damage is pretty good already. Like he is going down pretty hard. So I'm scaling poison. And then while my poison is ticking, I'm attacking with that lightning to get that stun off. Just for a little bit of safety. I'm trying to ignore that other monster. They do hit for a lot of damage. You see that I'm shocking him for 30%. Giving myself a lot more damage. Um, and this is very early. This is still the equivalent of Act 1 in the normal game. I would say this is probably the equivalent to Brutus. So the pace of the game is pretty okay for how I feel. Did I not die? I feel like I died here. I guess I just killed him first try. Um, and then here we get an uncut support gem, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. And that was a rare that I'm killing here. So you can see the rares do actually, like, drop decently. And that's, like, the map. You can portal between the waypoints. And then we're about to check out the support gem. And I'm trying to get, like, a, a rough idea on where to go, how to figure out how to traverse the zones. You can see we get ink, AoE, or conch effect. However... I was not high enough level to get that, so I did not actually get one of those support gems. One thing, like, the most important takeaway for me is once I stopped playing Ranger and um, stuff like that, I really wanted to keep playing. And right now, I actually wanted to keep playing. So that's a really good feeling. I will be showing Sork later. I did not enjoy that, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But I had such a blast on Ranger. And it's a very similar experience of uh, ExileCon, where I play the Huntress, and that was very fun as well. Um, whereas other classes weren't. I did um, ask Jonathan some questions about it, like what kind of they're, they're aiming for. And um, they are going to try to balance it so that it is more fun and, and lean more towards potentially the, um, 
the Ranger experience there, and that is, it feels very smooth. It feels very smooth. A very large difference between PoE 1 and PoE 2 is how large the zones are. Especially with them being so, they're, they're going to be so dynamic. They're not going to be like PoE 1 where you can learn the zones as much. Um, it's very difficult to really get a feel for where you're going. So I, I felt very lost and I was full clearing a lot. Now full clearing is definitely going to be something you're doing on hardcore. But on softcore you could maybe feel a little bit like, I, I wish I knew where I was going in this zone. So that's something I would like to... Um, to change but now we're gonna fast forward in a sec and take a look at the executioner the final boss that i did so now we're in a like fiery burned village and we're coming up on the executioner this is actually quite a hard boss fight i did not kill this on my first try um the first time i fought him he like one shot me with a cleave thing that you're about to see but uh he just chops off this poor woman's head he's executing people and uh yeah a little bit of a bit of a scary one. You can see here, I am trying to stay a little bit close to him, so he will try to auto attack me, but miss. And uh, I'm trying to keep my poison pod down. That lasts for quite a while. That's just to like, get that damage over time on. Then I'm hitting with the other poison skill I have to poison more, and uh, then just spamming my lightning attack. It does have loads of adds as well, so I do try to keep those close to the poison pod. Keep them slowed as well as slowly slowly dying while I focus damage on the boss. And you see even this boss, which is it's also kind of like a Brutus equivalent. It's it's a, it's hard to do a direct comparison. Um it's not the end boss, so it's not like Merveil. But um this is honestly this is probably the better Brutus comparison. It's a fairly hard boss fight. I think most people died to this. You know, a few people got one shot by that anvil. I got one shot by that slam you just saw. And a lot of people died. Ah, here we go. Um, I thought this was one of the attempts that I killed him in. But now you can see that I'm going back in and um, he's fully reset. And, that, and that's a neat thing here is that um, you really need to be able to do the boss in one go. You can't just cheese it by coming back repeatedly and, um, and, and whittling it down over time. So it's going to be a very big difference there for a lot of players. Um, so you'll be able to see a little bit more on the skill tree here and like what kind of the choices I'm making and stuff. Again, we're not going to be doing a video going over that because there are so many changes. Um, so sometimes you will have to like reassess your approach to a fight. And uh, a cool thing that I'm about to show off now is uh, that you have the weapon sets. Now I'm not actually doing anything different with my weapon sets right now. But especially for sorcerer, you will be doing fire and lightning on some skills. So you might have a... 30% uh, fire damage uh, in your weapon set 1 and in your offhand you might have a 5 to 10 cold damage to spells in your weapon set 2 and you can choose which spell goes with which weapon set so um, here I'm just taking the projectile damage on both just for good measure to be sure um, but on the sword you could take those in difference of summon fire, summon cold, etc. Almost getting one shot there. That is what killed me the first time. So that's a move that definitely can one shot my character, but um, uh, it didn't there. I definitely think they should buff the life of the characters. There's so many one shots early on. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people having different feelings about that, whether they feel it's a good thing or a bad thing. But a lot of us that were there was feeling like um, characters were very squishy, particularly the sorcerer, which you'll see after this fight. Um, you can see I am absolutely shredding the Executioner with my lightning move here. I'm a little bit scared here. That one shots. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm trying to keep that pod down for that nice damage over time as much as I can. also want to keep the ants off me. So a lot more going on here than PoE 1. And honestly, I gotta say, I was having an absolute blast. Uh, I think I was the second furthest on progression at this point. And, and just having so much fun. The speed running, blasting. So here the executioner goes down, and um, then we're gonna switch over to the sorcerer's here. I'll show you the loot. I run away from the loot. Here we have the sorceress. Uh, I had a very rough time at XLCOM playing the sorceress. Was getting stunned a lot, and I did continue trying WSD here. Definitely, just I really like that. I don't know if uh, mouse move will have that much of a place. 
uh, in PoE2, like WAC definitely felt like the way to go. And you'll notice here that the auto attack of the Sork is very strong. So much so that later on it actually used to be, or would be my main single target, because I managed to buy a pretty high, um, I managed to buy a pretty high, um, auto attack basically, because the, the way that it works, they, you later on will get ones and, um, staffs that have a higher level of firebolt as an implicit. So if you get one of those early on, that'll actually be insane single target compared to your spells. It doesn't use mana and you can move so much while casting them. They're maybe a little bit too strong compared to your spells. Now, part of the reason for that is also because in the sorceress, you have to be in melee range for a lot of the spells to really be effective and the combos and stuff. Here you can see like the damage of the auto attack early on. Um, and obviously there are so many other classes too. I've never gotten to try the druid. You see the damage here is a lot higher than the ranger. And that's because the auto attack of the uh, Sork is so strong. Whereas the spells themselves, not always so much. One thing I noticed as well that was a game changer. Being able to freely assign my skill points. Um, while standing next to monsters and the game pausing felt so good. I absolutely love the pause feature. Um, and I did experience quite a lot of crashes and coming back in with monsters around me and everything being paused. It's actually um, quite nice. So really enjoyed that. So we're just going into town here and we'll fast forward a little bit and you can see a little bit more of sword gameplay as it has progressed. Well, we can let you see here early on. I'm taking flame wall. It was that or ice nova. And um, I really wanted to have a lot of damage. And Flame Wall did end up being a really good choice for me. I also just didn't didn't really want to do too much cold. Here we're coming up on the Devourer. I did not show this on the Ranger, but I did kill it on the first try in Deathless. Um, it's actually quite a hard fight. Um, they had a, a different array of, uh, of people. Um, some that had played PoE 1 a lot and some that hadn't. And this was actually a quite difficult one for people that had never played PoE before. So it was uh, interesting seeing different approaches and and where people were dying a lot. And people were, were dying quite a lot here. Um, so decent single target, especially with the firewall up. Let's see, I'm trying to take out the ads and stuff. I do think I die here. I don't think I did this death this. You see that I am um, doing quite a lot of damage here. Now that poison ability was quite scary, and you can iframe through that. And in this, from things like that poison ability, you can hide behind other parts of the devourer. So um, that, that's actually the case for several of the, the boss fights where it'll it'll make things that you can hide behind, which is pretty cool. I guess I just did a death throws on everything. Um, I did think I died here. But um, that was the Devourer, which I think was quite a cool fight early on. Here, I'm just portaling back to town. And we'll now fast forward a little bit, show a little bit more sword. So in this zone, you can see these shield dudes here. Very dangerous. They were very hard. You have to kill them in melee range so they lower their shield. And if you don't kill them in melee range, they reflect projectiles, which is very difficult for the sword. And this zone was so hard. And everything respawns when you die. Um... So I think like, you know, having them like lower their shield for longer when you get through melee so you can get a distance would probably be good there because you're very squishy as a sword in melee range. We're going to fast forward here to the boss in this zone and uh, that was very difficult. Early on I started trying to kill it with spells and later on ended up auto attacking. Right, so here we have the boss and this is how I'm trying to first approach the fight using my abilities. Firewall, Orb Storms, similar behavior to PoE 1, where if you shoot projectiles through the firewall, they gain more damage. If you shoot while inside the uh, Orb Storms, it will zap out things and do a lightning strike on things, even outside of the orb. Um, so that was quite cool, but it was uh, it did feel very melee. So you see, I'm using my Chaos Bolt quite a lot here, and um, I definitely died in this fight because it was, it was very hard. And she has a crazy burst move that I'm looking forward to showing you. Um, she also like walls you in and has like very cool different moves here. And remember, this is actually my second time fighting this because I'd already fought on the, the ranger and killed on the ranger. It was actually so much harder on the, the witch. Like she summons and, and loads and stuff. Quite a, quite a difficult. 
I, I wasn't expecting that move at all because I think I killed the sofa so my range right enough to deal with it. So this is the attempt that I actually killed her on and you can see that my strat now is actually throwing firewall down for more damage and then auto attacking through it because that chaos bolt just does so much single target. But what it does more than dealing a lot of damage um, was that it, uh, it let me be so mobile. And uh, I wonder if we're going to see anything like Stormbrand and Blade Vortex and very mobile skills like that. But um, mobility is definitely name name a game. And uh, being able to move while casting, just, honestly, I cannot explain what a delight that was. You can see I have to like destroy the spikes. And you can see the boss bar here at the top as well. I really like that. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't enjoy Sorcerer. So I was, uh, I, I just wanted to play Ranger more. It was so much fun. It's important to find a class that you really vibe with. And I really vibed with the, the place of the ranger. Did a little excited mouse shake there. Another thing worth mentioning, the monsters, like the trash monsters, were so scary. Especially things like lightning and shock resistant were just incredibly rippy. I think they do want to incentivize that you're using multiple skills. So I had fire and lightning, so I, I would use fire on the lightning and uh, and shock resistant ones and, and that made a big difference so similar idea to Diablo 2 there I'm not a big fan of that um, I definitely prefer when you can do a one element playstyle however obviously PoE it's a lot easier to incentivize that with the skill points changing between your different abilities and it's a very different game than Path of Exile 1 you definitely gotta have a different approach to get into it and there were a lot of cool things that I saw and heard from other people as well like, you can actually actively block with a shield now, um, and then until your your block bar, which is above my life plus, um, gets filled, you are, like, not taking damage at all. You are fully blocking. So, being able to, like, actually make my own character from level 1 and stuff and, and evolve it over time made it feel a lot more Path of Exile, but still a very different game. Looking forward to trying more in the beta and, uh... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my, my sneak peek here of uh, what I'm uh, showing you guys. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.